Hi everybody, welcome to the show. Today we're talking curriculum. Everybody wants to know what books you're using, what curriculum you're using, what you're studying, and I'm gonna show you today. So, let's get right into it, subject by subject, what we are doing this year. This is Alexi's uh, book bin. So these are the things that I pulled out for her for this year. So we're going to start with a couple of these great books. So for math, you're using Math Lessons for Living Education. This is a Charlotte Mason style workbook. I went back and forth on picking this book. I'd seen it last year and really liked it from what I had read, what I had seen. Ultimately, I was sold after reading um, and having a review done by uh, Homeschool On. I'll link her up here. I really liked her review on this, and when I got it, I actually ordered it on Prime Day, along with like two or three other curriculum books. And my plan was I would order all of them on Prime Day and then ship back the ones we didn't use. So they all got shipped back, and we kept this one. Um, reasons why I loved it, why we kept it is I loved that it was um, story-based. So each, when they introduce some, a topic, they have stories. I thought that was really fun. It's an easy way to introduce new math concepts. And all the concepts that are taught in their lessons are very real world based and very concrete. So it's all about, you know, when they're talking about patterns, they're talking about cycles in nature. When they're talking about counting, things and why you need to count. It's about because you're going out and collecting eggs for your grandparents. Like it's all really world, um, real world based. And those were things why I really liked it. I also like that it's very gentle. It's not about doing busy work. It's not about answering 25 questions. It's about answer these questions. If you get it right, you probably know it, move on, which I think is really good for little kids. I also found it's kind of a, it says level one, which is technically, I think, supposed to be kind of a grade one, but I found a lot of the kindergarten curriculums that I was looking at are very, numbers 10, shapes, colors, bigger, smaller, kind of the stuff we did last year. And there doesn't seem to be like a next step. And then you get into the grade one curriculums and it's kind of like a real, it's a real jump from the kindergarten to the grade one. There doesn't seem to be like a kindergarten part one, kindergarten part two. I found this to be kind of like an advanced kindergarten, but not quite a grade one. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's kind of in the middle, which is perfect for us because Alexi loves math and zips through it like it's, it's like candy to her. She loves math. So we are using this for a math program this year. Um, for science, people always want to know what we're doing for science. We don't have any curriculum for science this year. We are really going to just stick with kind of unschooling and doing our unit studies. We talked about that in our last video where you talked, I showed you how I set up my unit studies. A lot of our unit studies are um, nature based this year. Since we're not using curriculum, I am introducing a couple things. So we signed up for our science center's homeschool program. So basically it is once a month. We go and we have a chance to have the experts at the Science Center teach our kids about a certain topic. Every month it's a different topic for the different age groups. So there's everything from like exploring the Arctic to coding to animals and bugs. So we have all these different topics. It's set by them, but at least it's kind of opening Alexi up to a lot of different topics that are science based. Not only do we go once a month um, to the classes, we also get a pass to go back once a month and just kind of explore. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna be doing a lot of is going to the Science Center and doing that. We're also excited because it means we're gonna meet more homeschoolers, which is a bonus for us. So we're excited about that. The other thing that we're going to be doing with Alexi is giving her um, some kind of like building time. And that is something we've been doing this summer, giving her a lot of building time. So letting her really build with her Legos, really build with her trains, um, forts and random things that she wants to build because that seems to be like her strong suit and it's something that she really gravitates to. So we really want to encourage that and encourage kind of her engineering 
brain. So we're going to make sure that she has some time at least once or twice a week where it's like, this is time. What do you want to build and help her to, to build what she wants to build when she wants help. She's also very independent, doesn't really want her help all the time. Let's get into literacy. We are doing a couple things for literacy. I find that people often do a lot for literacy. They tend to do, you know, spelling, grammar, reading, phonics, writing. We're going to do a little bit of kind of everything, but in a different way. So for a reading program, we picked out um, all about reading. I picked this program out for her because I loved that it came with some readers, but you don't work with the readers until you've their mastery and confidence building program. So essentially you don't, the stories and the readers match the words that you already know and they don't introduce new words until you've already learned them or have learned how to figure them out. So it helps that Alexi will, when she starts to read these books, because it's something she really wants to do, she really, really wants to learn, the words that she is seeing in the book are not words that she necessarily has to sound out, so it'll build her confidence because she's already done a few lessons ahead of time to learn them. I liked that it had a lot of hands-on learning options, so it has flashcards, um, it has an app, even in their like workbook, this is the student workbook, there's a lot of like cutting and pasting and um, little books that you can make. So I really liked that with that it basically took something that is not super hands-on and gave it activities that were hands-on. So I thought that would really be something that Alexi would benefit from. And I like that it was a program that I could use again with Zoe only by buying the student book when it was her turn to read. Um, and that it's just a very, again, it's a very gentle approach. There's no rush. You can work on it as little or as much as you want. And that it's just a really nice gentle program. And that's what we're gonna be doing for reading in terms of learning how to read. So other things that we're gonna be doing in our literacy, uh, poetry tea time. This is a very popular idea for a lot of people. Um, setting the table, having a tea party, and sharing poetry. Being real, I don't really like poetry. It's not a, it's not a thing that I enjoy. But we're gonna do poetry tea time our way because I, I can read poems maybe one time, but I can't do it very often. It's just not a, a thing that I enjoy doing. But we're gonna definitely use our poetry tea, tea time, poetry tea time, to um, to read other books and to talk about other things that we've read. And it's something actually Lexi requested. She asked for having to have more tea parties um, and Zoe loves tea parties. So it's kind of gonna be a read aloud time. Maybe not poetry, but definitely a read aloud time with you know with our, with our china and our teacups and our fancy hats. And just, we're gonna have some fun with that. Um, our goal is to do it once a month. That is our plan, that is our goal. That's what we're gonna do. We'll see if it happens, but that's our goal. We also have our reading basket, which I talk about again in our unit studies, that I have uh, a basket that we fill with books, all kinds of books that are kind of related to our theme. Sometimes we stretch. I've, last year we did a pond theme and I had books that just had frogs in them. The characters were frogs. Nothing to do with ponds other than the characters are frogs, but it was just a great way to kind of have a whole bunch of books that were kind of connected that were easily accessible for the kids and they could pull them out and then they were able to make connections between oh yeah this is happening in this book you remember when that character he was also a frog and things like that so that's kind of our reading basket that's how we use our reading basket we use it for um reading in the morning and it's a place to pull books at night too so those are things that we're going to be doing throughout the year zoe especially really loves reading lexi likes to read too but zoe's like she will sit and read forever but this way we have kind of some books that we can make connections to because they're so closely linked. So that's how we're doing our reading basket. Um, another, when it comes to reading, another thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna start introducing, oops, my basket fell over. A um, couple novels. No, I do not expect Alexi to be able to read the novels, but I would like to sit down and read novels with her. Um, read them to her kind of either at bedtime or when we're having like just 
reading time the two of us so I picked some book novels that I thought she would really like um, these were already from my collection so I didn't have to buy them um, because I had these from when I was teaching so I have Winnie the Pooh um, she has seen Winnie the Pooh so I thought this might be kind of an interesting um, hook that she already knows and I like that Winnie the Pooh kind of every chapter is kind of its own little story so and they're not super long so again looking I was looking for books that had short chapters and interesting stories so Winnie the Pooh made the cut um, <clears throat> Pippi Longstockings I thought this would be really fun I remember reading and watching Pippi Longstockings growing up and I think she would like kind of the absurdity of it like a girl who can carry a horse over her head and lives in a house by herself and I thought this is definitely kind of like something she would love so we got that I'm kind of going for absurdity like books that are just so silly and ridiculous that they're funny um, for some of these so that is also where we got Fantastic Mr. Fox because this book is just a hoot and a half and I thought she'd really enjoy enjoy reading this one and then I have Charlotte's Web this is um, of course the classic but I also thought this would be great when we're doing kind of our insect study kind of in June-ish this would be kind of a fun book to connect what we're reading about with like what we're learning so we have that those are some books that we're gonna read this year if we get to them we get to them if we don't we don't I just think she's gonna enjoy because she really is kind of into listening to series um, I'm reading kind of books that are connected or stories that are connected so I think that the novel form will kind of really intrigue her especially this is like not for now this is for like springtime so that's what we're gonna do kind of later in the year something else we're gonna do is in November uh, not November January when we kind of have a lull I planned a author study and we're going to read the books of Barbara Reed um, she is famous for doing her plasticine um, Plato kind of pictures and having the stories that go with them so we're gonna do kind of a whole unit study author study reading her books um, making Plato building our own art uh, pictures out of Plato that kind of thing that is gonna be something we're gonna do in January and one of the reasons I picked Barbara Reed for right now is a lot of her stuff is available in both French and English so I've already made my list on the library website and so in December I just have to click the button and boom it'll all be delivered to my local branch just down the street so that is another literacy thing that we're doing the other thing that we do I know it sounds like a lot but we don't do it all the time okay I promise <clears throat> this is Lexi's notebook she picked it out herself she's very proud of it it is pink her favorite color um, and so we do journaling. So when we sit down and we do seat work, I ask Alexi to draw a picture. I haven't done it, it's a brand new book. But, so she draws a picture and then I write what, what it is that she drew. Sometimes it's very silly things. I think one day I said, it is a scribble. And I wrote, it is a scribble. Um, but yeah, so she draws a picture, I write it out. And then again, towards kind of the end of the year, maybe not even this year, maybe next year, same idea, but then she can copy the sentence that was written down. So kind of practicing copy work, but with what she's drawn. So that's what we're doing. That is pretty much our whole literacy program for the next 12 months, which it seems like a lot, but it's a lot of like little things that happen. So really poetry tea times once a month, reading a novel is something that happens at bedtime. We're going to be doing our seat work book, that's what it's called, our seat work reading book three times a week for maybe 10 minutes. So it's, it seems like a lot, but it's a lot of little things that happen throughout the year. So that's our literacy plan. Um, then we come up to art. Art was something that I felt like we just didn't do enough of last year. We, I just, I, this was a me thing. I didn't get out the supplies enough. So I'm making a goal that we're going to try to do art and have some art time a little more frequently. And one of the things that I did for that is that I've made a space to have art supplies out so they're more accessible for Lexi so she can just walk over and pick something up and start working. Crayons, paper, markers kind of thing. But I also want to once a month add in a supply that is something different. So I have uh, once a month, we'll have a month where 
if you want to like it's watercolors we can paint with watercolors if you want to we have pastels and we have um different you know painting on canvas having different activities that are arts all throughout the year and that they change every month so it's not just like oh for i'm gonna paint with watercolors for the 10th month straight like just making it a little more interesting and giving her access and introducing her to different mediums. I think that's something that I really wanted to incorporate for this year. So that was a, that's a new addition for us, is more, more art time. And then, because we like to be busy, we have to talk about our socialization. What are we doing to get out of the house? Because homeschooling is not about sitting at home. Let's be real, it's not. So we have, like I already talked about, we have our monthly um, science center visits. Once a month is a homeschool day. And then we also get a pass to go another time of the month if we so choose. So we have our science center. Um, that's gonna be exciting. Hoping to meet more, some more homeschoolers in the greater Sudbury area. Uh, we also are gonna continue going to our French preschool program. It's technically ends at four. Alexi is four, but I also have Zoe. So we're gonna continue going to our French preschool program. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we even have the option this year because Zoe can push her nap and Alexi doesn't nap anymore, maybe even going twice a week. We'll see. We're gonna we're gonna roll with that because we really did Alexi's kind of just recently started to use French more, so we want to encourage that and keep going to our French program. We are gonna keep up with our playgroup because I love playgroup. It's one of my favorite times of the week. Mostly I think playgroup's more for me than it is for the kids, but we like going to playgroup. Um, we're also just gonna be doing gymnastics again and um, we do our monthly field trip. So I try to plan a field trip, something to do um, at some point during the month. It doesn't have to be during the week. And we're gonna go do something that is kind of related to our theme, but not necessarily, just something that is learning and educational, but also a lot of fun for us. So that is our field trip. And there's also some talk of us maybe starting to help set up uh, a co-op group in our area. So lots of outings, lots of ways to socialize. And that is kind of our plan for the year. It's a lot of play, a lot of just introducing different mediums and elements and just letting the kids kind of love what they're doing and learn with the way that they want to learn and kind of encouraging their things they're good at and introducing them to new things to see what else they might be good at. That's what we're doing for this year. We are going to start very, very soon. Probably we'll start all this stuff. We're just finishing up a few things here already right now, but we'll be starting the stuff up uh, when dad goes back to work in a couple weeks. And we're excited to see where all this takes us this year and to start a new year of learning. So if you guys like this video, if you think the content we put out is fine and exciting and inspiring, um, please hit, click the bell and uh, hit subscribe so you can see more of our stuff. And if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter because we put a lot of like really cool ideas and stuff up there too. So see you guys soon and uh, have a great day. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get notifications when we upload our latest videos. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to leave us a comment. We'll see you next week for more activities, adventures, and lifelong learning. Bye! Bye.